Welcome back. In the last video we talked about white blood cells and red blood cells. In this video we'll cover something quite related to red blood cells, more specifically what's actually inside red blood cells. So I read the actual dot point, it says explain the adaptive advantages of hemoglobin. So what's inside red blood cells? It says hemoglobin. And first before we start to talk more about this dot point, what I'll do is I'll explain what hemoglobin actually is. So I have hinted towards it in the last couple of videos, but I haven't really gone into detail in terms of what hemoglobin actually is. And then I'll go in terms of what the other part of it means, which is the explaining part. But first I'll talk about hemoglobin. So here we have a red blood cell. And we have millions of these red blood cells in our body. So these red blood cells, they're pretty much their only function is to carry oxygen. So red blood cells are oxygen carriers. And not only are they oxygen carriers, that's their only function. So they have no real other function but to carry oxygen. So these red blood cells inside of them have something called hemoglobin. Now here you actually see it spelled with a E. So here it's spelled hemoglobin. That's because that's the American way of spelling it. Us Australians and British spell it with a AE as opposed to just a E. But it's the same thing. What is hemoglobin is? It's a protein. So it's a protein. And I'll show you what this protein looks like from the inside. This is the actual same hemoglobin right here. And this protein, so these pink parts are polypeptide chains. These are the protein parts. So hemoglobin, so look at the globin part. The globin part refers to the protein. So the globin part is the protein. Now the whole pinkish part, that's the globin part. But the most important part when it comes to hemoglobin is what's actually inside of hemoglobin, which is the heme group. So we have hemoglobin, that heme group. I'll make that online that in a different color, maybe in pinkish. The heme group is this group here. So on the same picture here, again, the American spelling, they spelled it H-E-M-E. Of an e, whereas us Aussies spell it like so, heme. And the heme group is more or less iron. So the heme group is iron. And the symbol for iron, the chemical symbol for iron, is Fe. Fe. So that Fe is iron. So every hemoglobin has these iron groups attached to it. So there's four parts to a hemoglobin. And each part has an iron, iron attached to it. So one hemoglobin, hemoglobin, one of it, has four heme groups. Remember the, the heme groups were just your iron. And to those heme groups, we have oxygen attached. So here O2, it attaches to, not to the protein parts, but to the heme groups, to the iron part. So here's the whole same thing again. You can imagine this is our red blood cell. The red part is a red blood cell. Then we have these hemoglobin. So the, the yellow parts here, these ones, are our hemoglobin. And each red blood cell has millions of these. So they have millions of these hemoglobins. That's basically the only thing they have. Again, this is a really important point. Red blood cells have no nucleus. So nucleus is the control center of a red blood cell. They have no nucleus. So they have almost basically, they have no brain. The only function is to carry. They have no other purpose. So they don't even have a brain. They just carry hemoglobin. And in these green ones, which are meant to be the hemoglobins, we have these brownish dots. These brownish dots are meant to be the heme groups. So the iron groups, heme. So the heme groups, and every single hemoglobin has four of these heme groups. And to those heme groups, we have this attaching, which was the oxygen. So you can imagine one oxygen molecule attaching to each of these heme groups. And I'm not sure if you know this or heard of this before, but many people take iron supplements. Iron supplements. 
especially for people who have anemia. So anemia is actually something called anemia. Anemia. I'm spelled that. I think I spelled it wrong. But anemia is if you have an iron deficiency. And the reason why that's a problem is because if you have an iron deficiency, the major place where all iron gets used is to make these heme groups. So if you have an iron deficiency, that means we can carry less oxygen in our blood. And that means we have less oxygen to make energy. So people who have anemia or low iron levels can't make enough of these heme groups, which means their red blood cells can't carry as much oxygen. And that means that you have, if you go for a run, for example, then you often lose a lot of um, energy really quickly and you feel really fatigued really quickly. That's really common in girls or in females because they have the period, which means they lose blood. And anemia, the way they can try to overcome that is by taking iron supplements or having an iron-rich diet. So that is just yeah, a side funny thing. But another analogy you can use the hemoglobin when it comes to hemoglobin is looking at it from a sort of car perspective or more specifically a money truck perspective. You can imagine a money truck to be a red blood cell. So the money truck is our red blood cell. And the only function of the money truck is to transport the money inside. That's the only function of the mine truck. Same as the red blood cell, the only function of the red blood cell is to carry the actual oxygen. Now, the armed guard is like our hemoglobin. Again, it's only it's this, the, part, the protein part, the hemoglobin. So the, really, the only function of the hemoglobin is still only to carry oxygen. It has no other fu function but to carry oxygen. And then we go specifically, they might, these armed guards might, might carry this money briefcase. And the briefcase itself might be like the heme groups. And the heme groups have the oxygen attached. So these are the heme groups. But again, even the heme groups, the only function is to carry oxygen. So the thing that is really most important when it comes to this is obviously the money. And the money is our, like our oxygen. The thing that we're desperately trying to get to our cells. Uh, that, that's an analogy you can use as well, the arm truck, which um, is supported by armed guard who's carrying a briefcase full of money. Now, when it comes to this actual dot point, what you need to know is you need to know the advantages of why do we have hemoglobin? What purpose does it serve? Now, remember this equation, glucose plus O2, which is oxygen, plus it goes into carbon dioxide and water and ATP. This is cellular, cellular respiration. So this actually, as the word cellular suggests, so cell as in it happens in cells, this happens in cells, so they need glucose and they need oxygen to make something called ATP. And ATP, this was energy, and we need energy to grow, we need energy to reproduce, and we need energy to do all kinds of things. So the cells need to do this to be able to survive, and they need oxygen for that. So one of the reasons why we need to have, so there's three main reasons. One of the main reasons why we need to have it is because we have, by having hemoglobin, that allows us to carry much more oxygen. So it allows us allows more oxygen to be carried in blood because one problem when it comes to normal oxygen, so here these are the alveoli. This here is in the lungs. This here is in the lungs. And in the lungs we have oxygen. But the problem is um, when it comes to dissolving actual oxygen, you might have very little being dissolved in plasma, which means you might only have one of these particles actually going to the, in the blood plasma because the majority of oxygen does not dissolve in water. And remember, plasma is mostly water. So if we have only dissolving for, for our transport, then we wouldn't have much of our oxygen actually leaving the alveoli, which is our lungs, and going into the blood vessels. But if you have another way to carry oxygen, which in this case can be the um, red blood cells, then we have a second way which is quite effective. So this here was the same part we have here. We have our red blood cells, RB for red blood cells, which is the red thing here. The green ones were our hemoglobin, hemoglobin. And inside the hemoglobins we have these heme groups where our oxygen attached. And uh, this here is the same thing. I just, I just drew one. But again, imagine there's not just one hemoglobin, there's millions of hemoglobin in these red blood cells. But what it does, it will move closer to the alveoli. Once it does, it actually absorbs more of these oxygen. So remember, we can have these attaching to the heme groups, so they'll leave as well. 
he'll leave his world and they'll enter the actual hemoglobin. And that's really good because now we can carry much more oxygen. And this number is actually quite important as well. In, ter in terms of dissolved, so dissolved CO2, dissolved, oh, sorry, dissolved oxygen, only about 2% of our supply of oxygen is dissolved in plasma. The rest is carried in hemoglobin. Carried in hemoglobin. So that will be about 98% of it. So this year, which is dissolved in plasma, only about 2% of it, it travels this way. The majority of it carry, is carried in these red blood cells in hemoglobin. Now this was the first point. It allows more oxygen to be carried in the blood. And the second advantage of hemoglobin is that as soon as the first molecule of oxygen binds, so hemoglobin becomes more likely to bind oxygen once the first mo few molecules have attached. So once the first few molecules have attached and come over from the alveoli, many more will follow. So that way we can make sure that all that oxygen is supposed to goes onto our red blood cells and onto our hemoglobin. So first advantage was it can carry much more. Second advantage was that it actually the structure of it allows it to especially attach many more once it passes these alveoli. And the last one was that hemoglobin releases oxygen at the site where it's needed. Remember these hemoglobins and these red blood cells have no nucleus. So how do they know to actually release oxygen where it's needed, which is at the cells? Remember why the cells needed? The cells needed for to do so these are the cells here. Cells needed to do cellular respiration. So they need it to be able to actually make energy. But how does the red blood cell know to actually leave to drop the actual oxygen into the the cells themselves? The way they know that is through acid, pH being lowered. The reason why, so first of all what we have is obviously we have these ones which are glucose will go into cells and then we have this red blood cell actually moving towards the cells. But one thing has happened these do cellular respiration, and remember in cellular respiration, we actually have CO2 being produced. And if you remember the actual reaction from CO2, we have CO2 plus H2O, which is water, going into these hydrogen carbonate ions, but it also produces these hydrogen ions, these ones here. And this happens as soon as the carbon dioxide, which gets produced for cellular respiration, enters the plasma. So you're going to have some of that CO2 entering the plasma. And as soon as it does that, the pH will be lowered. So it lowers pH. And that's actually a sign for the red blood cells to re release their actual oxygen because the structure is less effective if the pH is lower. So what that does, the slightly lower pH than usual makes these oxygens leave from here, so it makes them leave from the hemoglobin and go onto, into, not onto, into the cell. So now we have oxygen where it's meant to be in the cells. And remember, they do cellular respiration, so they produce carbon dioxide as a byproduct. And this carbon dioxide can then attach to red blood cells because now there's nothing attached to them anymore. So they'll actually move from there, they'll move onto the hemoglobin. And by doing so, they're not called oxyhemoglobin, they're called carb amino hemoglobin. So that was when we have oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide attached, we call it carb amino hemoglobin. Right? So now we have that third point was that hemoglobin releases oxygen at the site where it's needed. It's needed at the cells and it actually releases it, which is really good because that's actually where it's needed. So after it's loaded its carbon dioxide, it's going to do the whole full circle and then move back to the alveoli, which is the lungs, where they actually remove it again. So here the carbon dioxide will be removed. So it's going to be gone from the actual hemoglobin because it's going to diffuse over and get back out again in the alveoli. So here now the carbon dioxide is in the alveoli, which is the lungs. And remember then from there, it's going to leave, it actually it's going to go through our lungs and it be exhaled out. Right? So the three main advantages of hemoglobin was that it allows more oxygen to be carried in blood. And that was important because we need to have oxygen to make ATP.
So without hemoglobin, we would have 98% less oxygen, which would mean 98% less ATP in our body, and that would be bad for our cells. Second advantage was the hemoglobin becomes more likely to bind oxygen once the first few molecules have attached, which means now here you would have, you know, you'd have one binding, and as soon as that one binds, you're going to have some of the other ones coming over as well. And this usually happens at our alveoli, which is at our lungs. And so that was a another advantage. It's more likely to bind more molecules once the first ones have bound. And the last one is that it releases oxygen where it's needed. So it releases oxygen where it's needed, which was at the cells themselves. And that happens because the pH is a bit lower at the cells because of that carbon dioxide producing hydrogen ions, which is, makes it acidic. And that increases the release of oxygen to flow into cells and carbon dioxide to move onto the hemoglobin. And then that carbon dioxide is removed at the lungs again. And remember, there's two words, oxyhemoglobin. That was when we have oxygen attached to hemoglobin. We call it oxyhemoglobin. And when there's carbon dioxide attached, we call it carb amino hemoglobin. So carb for carbon dioxide, carb amino hemoglobin. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.